as my sermon may be short, I always promise that it never is. But, but today it may be a little safe. On this second Sunday of Advent, uh, David and I, uh, as we were preparing, uh, we decided that we would, there would be sort of two things. Uh, one thing would be uh, the traditional, there's a traditional word thing that goes with Advent. Uh, and I know, how many of you grew up celebrating Advent in your churches? Yeah, not, not, very, not too many of us, just, yeah, just a few of us. And uh, so <clears throat> if you're wondering in today, or if you're here today, if you came in a few weeks ago, you might say, what is this Advent thing? Well, the Advent, Advent is the season before Christmas. It's a time of preparation for Christmas. It's a time of focusing on the coming of Christ, uh, uh, the coming of Christ as a baby, and sort of get back, getting back in touch with that. It's also a time to think about how uh, the, 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 the second coming of Christ, which, which early Christians were really, uh, really uh, put a lot of stock in that, that they were expecting Christ to come back soon. And in fact, one of the readings that and their departures, their, their goodbyes to each other, was this said, "Never not," which meant, uh, uh, "Come, Lord." You know, and uh, and then then I and then for me, for me, I think it's also a time when I want to give special encouragement to Jesus to come afresh in my life and and in the world around me. And so, so in this, so. <clears throat> Traditionally, there are, uh, on the different Sundays of Advent, when we light the candles or the, uh, the, the Advent wreath, uh, there, you know, there, are, there, are sort of, there are themes that, 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 you know, that the churches usually pick up. Now, does anybody, can anybody remember what last week's theme was? Prophets. Prophets. Good. Okay, you get extra credit. Okay. The two emphases today that perhaps you picked up from one of them is you're going to be about shepherds. We're going to talk a little bit about shepherds. But the other, the other, the word thing, the state of being thing, is peace. Is peace. And in the song that the choir sang so beautifully. You know, they, I, I had to look to be sure there weren't, there weren't the angels over there singing it, you know, as they were singing, because they were, they were singing the words from the, you know, the words from this, this, uh, uh, this, 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 this song of blessing that the angels brought to the shepherds. And part of that was a promise of peace. They were saying peace, you know, they were saying, they were, peace to you, peace to those people of goodwill. And, uh, uh, and so we, uh, and so, the, but today, when I, mean, when I was looking at the scriptures, I was wondering why, why did, why did Luke include the story in there? You know, sometimes I, 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 I think all of us are, you know, probably enjoy the impact of, of, of art on our lives, you know, and, and writings of the art to also, you know, when you come in. When you come into a building, you know, into a room, you know, I sometimes just the 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 the, the decor in the room will will sort of will sort of wash over me and give it an impact on my life. You know, I walk in and their candles, you know, they walk in and their banners, on the Christmas tree, ponsettas, and and then they're they're the crushes, the nativity scenes, you know. Now, sometimes I walk in and I don't notice anything. Barbara, when I was in, when I was doing my work in, in clinical pastoral education, uh, my, my, my supervisor called me Mr. Observant because I wasn't, I wasn't very <laughs> observant. And, uh, and so I had, I, had to I, had to really, I had to really work on that. She was encouraging me to pay attention to what the room looks like and what people look like, what, what's going on in the room. And so, but, but I, you know, but, but a lot of people are not like that. A lot of people come in and are, inst are instantly impacted by the things around. You know, I don't know how long I was here before I realized there was a stained glass window over there. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and and so you know, and so one of the you know the there's this impact that that that, that art makes upon us, 
And so I think the first, you know, sort of the first level of that is it just hits you. You know, and you know, people, and, and sometimes and so sometimes when I'm looking at, at a piece of art, you know, I I have I sort of relate to it in two ways. One way I look at it and I just I just just let it speak to me. You know, regardless of regardless of anything. Just what is it saying? What is it saying that we have cameras? You know? And then then the other part of it is I ask myself, I want I really want to what what was the what was the author or what were the people what were the people who decorated this room? What, why did they choose those things? Why are those things in, in, in what they are presenting today? You know, and so, and how that relates is that I, 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 I was wondering why the writer of Luke included the story of the shepherds. Now, we don't, I don't know how many of you think about it very much, but when, there are really only only two gospel accounts about the birth of Jesus. You know, we have four gospels. John sort of does it. He has the sort of Zenish kind of thing where he talks, you know, in the beginning of the light, the light was known. But but there are only really two gospels that talk about the, uh, the the birth of Jesus. You know, and one is Luke, and the other is Matthew, and they give different information. Not contrary information, but different in information. Uh, Luke, is the, Luke is the only place that we have the story of the of, of the of baby in swaddling clothes in a manger. Now, Luke is the only place that we have the story of shepherds. So, what did Matthew talk about? And we'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about Joseph in a couple of weeks. But. Joseph, uh, uh, Matthew talks, Matthew's the only place we have the story of the Magi, uh, or the wise men, as I always called it as a kid. Uh, and, and so, you know, the, and, and so, okay, so we look at this and we say, oh yeah, but we got these two things, and that gives us this composite, you know, sort of a composite picture, and it does. So over here, over here, and over here, and over here too. We have we have wise men coming together and shepherds coming together, but there's no place in scripture that that really that there, that portrays that, you know. So what was so okay? Another one other thing is that just to throw out is that these books circulated for quite a while without bumping in without really bumping into each other so much, you know. It wasn't until like later that that the church put said okay we've got this story from Matthew and Matthew and Mark and and, and uh, Luke and John, they're all Gospels and they're the best and we don't know if there were some that were set aside, pushed aside. But these were pulled together and they, these become the sources for us as we think about, as we, as we, as we try to get, get this picture of who Jesus was. And, um, and so, the, the, so, so Luke was written probably around 85, year 85. You know, so before that, there were stories that were circulated around about Jesus and about his birth and about his life and about his death. And Paul was already writing, uh, writing letters to people, and the church was already in existence. But Luke saw fit that, you know, we said God, God was working in that. Luke saw fit to, you know, to write it down, to write the story down. And one of the part of the story that he wrote is about the shepherds. So what do you think? What do you think, Luke? Why did Luke include the story of the shepherds in his narrative? What 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 is what do the shepherds do for you when you read it? Have you, you know, and, and maybe you say, well I don't think about it. You know, so I'm inviting you to think about it today. You know, I'm inviting you to think about it today. Because I think, you know, if we if we think about it today then then as we go through the Christmas season, then when we hear the story again and again and again, then, then, then it will, our, our, uh, uh, the, the word of God will, will become, uh, will, will related to that particular thing, might become more clear to us. It might. So what, you know, this is your participation. Why the shepherds? Beth? For me, it always symbolizes of Jesus was for us regular folk. For, for us regular folk. Yeah. 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 Ye
Regular folks, okay. They were there, and so are we in celebrating the joy. Right, right. What about others? Anybody else? Well, that's that for me, and that's that's pretty much what I was going to say about shepherds. So, uh, but uh, because I think that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I think that uh, when I, you know, as I thought about that, here were these people who were, who were who were common people. They were not the powerful. They were not the rich. They were not the educated. They were the they were just regular folks, you know. And they were and they were doing the, they were keeping their sheep. They were taking care of their sheep when they had this encounter for this this heavenly encounter with these angels. Who, who sent them to and, and told them about the birth of Jesus. And in telling them about the birth of Jesus, they, you know, they, the, the angels use these words like King, Messiah, Lord, you know, and these were, these were real significant words that the angels used to talk about Jesus. And, the, and it says that, and it says that, and I would think that if I encountered one angel, much less a host, you know, I would probably be, you know, I, and then they told me to go somewhere. I might check out the doctor first, but I may, <laughs> but I, but I would, you know, I, I would respond. I would respond to that. And in the story, in the story, the shepherds did that. They responded. Um, so, so in this visual splash of, you know, the, the, the shepherds, it, 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 it come, this, this, this literary splash that comes to us, we, we sort of let it wash over us, and we hear them, and we, and we sing them. We sing these angel, angelic praises. But then we also ask the question, why shepherds? And uh, <clears throat> now, okay, so the, when the angels, the, the message that the angels gave to the, to the, to the, to the shepherds were, were, were a message, was sort of a message of, of, of hope and peace. Now, I... Over 70 times in the scriptures, people are told, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I was wondering, I was wondering, well, I, I, th I, could, I could see if it's an angel speaking to me, I might be afraid. You know, if it's, a, if, it's, if, it's a, if the messenger is, a, is, is very unusual, you know, I might be afraid. Uh, but, but why is it? Why is it that we are that the pe that people are told again and again, "Don't be afraid"? It occurred to me that, that that in this relationship, this evolution of a relationship of a relationship with God, that the people of God have, have you know the people of God have been have, 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 their 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 way of looking at God has changed over over the centuries, and. And, and early, and early in the, you know, the, when God was sort of a tribal God and God was a national God, you know, and, and everything that happened, it was assumed that God caused it. So if something bad really happened, it was because of God. If, if, they, if they won a war, it was because God had favor with them. If they lost a war, it was because God, because God did not have favor with them. And, and some of us have had parents like that. You know that, we, that we've had parents that were that kind of had the, that were that kind of had the kind of uh, uh, we, we looked to, and they and they seem to have that kind of judgment on us. But most, but a lot of us haven't. A lot of us have had parents who were loving and caring, and care, and loving and caring. And and Jesus, Jesus was when he is coming into the world was to bring to bring a different understanding about about who God is. And in this evolution of our understanding of who God is from this, this Old Testament God that, you know, that, we, that was, was seen as the, as the prime causer of, of, of everything good and bad, Jesus brought us this picture of God, a, a picture of a, of a relationship with God that was intimate, that was close. That, that it, it, he described God in, 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 in his life that we, we, the, 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 he modeled for us this, this God that, that, that he would spend time with you know and, that, and, that, and, that, and he modeled for us this God that, that he taught us to, to call God by, by the name Father or parent 
and, and not only just call, him, call God the Father, but to call him uh, Daddy or Abba, which is Daddy. And so, so in this, I just see this, I see this beginning, this birth of the Savior that is coming, and the way that he is going to save is to bring us, is bring us into a new kind of relationship with, with, with God. And in this, in this coming, you know, he's, the angels say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid about this. Don't be afraid about this newness. And they seem to get over their fear pretty quickly. I mean, they went, in the story, they went straight on in and saw the baby and came back. So the angels were offering peace, a peace to the people. One of my favorite stories, of, and it, it, comes from, it comes from real life. I may not get up as I go a little bit, but I don't know. But in 1974, 1974, out of the jungles of the Philippines, there came a, they, they, there was a man found who was a, it was a Japanese soldier who was still at war. There had been, there had been three or three, one, and they, a couple had come, uh, three or four, a couple had come out before, another, another, another one who had been killed by the Philippine army. And then this guy, this guy, uh, I've got his name somewhere, but, uh, the, for you, it didn't matter about him, but, but anyway, in fact, he said he was, he, uh, <clears throat> so he, he, he was discovered, and, and, he, and they had to convince him that the war was over, that there was no war. And because he had, he had, he had, he had continued to hide in the jungles, he wasn't, he, you know, people maybe had seen signs of it, but nobody could lure him out. And I thought about how, how, how that is, is so like the relationship that so many of us have with God. That our relationship with God is not this loving, caring parent. Our relationship with God is as though we're, we're at odds with, with God. We're at odds with God. And the gospel, gospel that comes to me from this passage that we're reading, when we talk about the birth of this, of this one who is Lord and Savior and King, is, is the, the gospel is, is, is the, the invitation to make peace and to accept the peace that God has offered. That God is not one who is looking at who is looking at us judgmentally and harshly and, and waiting for us to do something that, that God demands of us. In order, God God initiates the peace. He makes the peace, peace offering to us. He offers the peace to us. So today, you know, we look at the shepherds, these common people who were. Were, were herding their sheep and since they lived with their sheep you know and we, and we, and we see that, that God that in this story God chose them, he loved them he came to them, he offered them the peace, he offered them the news, he invited them to participate in Christmas and in this in this in this, uh, uh, in this birth of Jesus I would like that to me for the holidays, for this Christmas. I'd like for me, but for me, I would like to, I would like to, I would like to hear afresh God saying to me that, that, I, that, he, that he and God and I are at peace with each other. And I invite you to, you know, to participate again, to celebrate again the one who's come and came to declare the peace, to announce the peace to us. Amen.